Now in this video, I continue painting the underpainting. And by the, the end of it, it'll be completely done and ready to dry and paint over in the next session. So the idea thus far has been to just keep the painting very warm with the idea of keep, keeping it uh, keeping it complementary to the colors that will go over the top. So I've kept the, the, uh, the sky, which is going to be blue, kind of an orangey color, and the trees, which are going to be green, I've kept them um, orange to red. And then the shadows, I've, I've kept some purples. Now, um, I do talk a little bit about shadows in trees and shadows in general on my blog. So you, you might want to go there and uh, read some of the blogs and there's some video links as well. And uh, you can learn a little bit more about my, my idea of, of why shadows are both cool and warm. But uh, anyway, that might be interesting. Here I'm adding a little bit of cobalt. No, no, this is thalo blue to the palette. These distant mountains, I want them to be pink, so I want the underpainting to be, uh, or at least tend towards uh, blue, a bluish color. And I'm using the ever trusty pie-shaped palette knife in this case. Um, it gives a nice, nice edge, and I can use the tip to add little details. So I'm still using my basic palette, my three primary colors of Hansa Yellow, Light, Pyrrole, or, or um, uh, Napsol Red, and Ultramarine Blue. And now in this case, I've switched over to a, my really long palette knife, and I'm just dipping paint straight out of the can, which is, is really super fun. So. Um, you know, I'm picking up some color as I go. Uh, you know, a little bit of pa paint that's on the canvas, on the edges, and adding a little bit of white and uh, yellow just to make that drop in value as it goes into into the distance. But I still want to keep it nice and red and orange. So I just tweak the values by mixing. You know, picking up a little bit of titanium white on my palette knife and then, and then mixing it in. So you can do a lot of your mixing, especially at this stage on the canvas. You don't have to mix on the palette necessarily. You can uh, pick up paint and reapply it around various parts of, of the canvas. So I'm, I'm thinking at this point that I may have gotten the, the ground plane a little bit too red. And uh, I'll go back in and add some darker details and kind of neutralize some of that red somewhat as, as I go along. But the idea is to get a really strong design that has the temperature relationships of your final painting. And, um, you know, it doesn't have to be exact. That's one of the interesting things about this technique is uh, there is room for wide margin of error. If I want to reduce the red that's showing through, I simply you know, will paint a thicker layer of green over the top of the, of the red in the final application. So um, you have a lot of, of um, latitude. And, and of course, I'm, I'm saying here that I might do this in two applications of paint. It's also possible that I'll go in with a third application and, um, you know, further tweak some of the relationships. So um, here I'm just uh, actually I'm tweaking a little bit, probably too much at that point. I just need to, you know, put in some of my detail, the salient detail, the important detail, and just kind of get on with it. Now I've switched to an that's actually a, a canvas scraping knife and it really is one of the, the, the funnest tools I have. You can get a really nice stroke with that curved blade. You can get a really sharp edge on one side and then you can you can get a soft edge by using the other side of the, the knife. So it's really fun for 
you know, picking up color here and there and then reapplying it in other parts of the canvas. In some cases here, I'm looking for some texture that maybe is a little bit too pronounced and I, I, I feel like it might be hard to deal with in the second application of color. So I'm just picking up some of it and, and moving it elsewhere. So, um, you know, I am going to paint over this whole thing so it will be basically obliterated. I'm going to scratch back in and into it and, and do other things to kind of reveal this underpainting. But you don't want to get too precise. You don't want to get too precious with, with anything at this point. You want to be able to uh, move straight ahead without, you know, feeling like you're losing some some expression that you just can't live live without. So it, it's kind of an interesting process where you actually leave a lot of the thinking undone, and you're gonna you're gonna remedy that down the, the down the line. Now I'm adding some titanium white here to to give a transition to how the sky will transition to the very you know, bottom part of the sky, which you know tends to be very gray. You know, it goes from a nice deep blue at the top and transitions to a grayer blue, a little bit warmer blue at the bottom of the sky. Generally speaking, obviously it depends on the lighting of your scene. But in this case, um, which is going to be a, a fairly bright scene, I want to gray that down and by adding some titanium white to it. Now, I've just switched to a round and loaded up some nice dark red and crimson, and I'm just going to lay in the tree trunk on that. And you can see I'm, I'm going upward, and a stroke will tend to get thinner as you pull it up, or as you pull it wherever, you know, down. Or Now here, I've, I'm just I'm going the other way. I want to thicken up that line. Now, when I paint on the color of the final application of paint, I may paint right over this, this tree trunk. But one of the interesting things about this technique is this leaves kind of a groove in the paint. And um, you might call it sort of a textural pentimento that you can, you can kind of find that groove and you can kind of scrape that out so you can reveal this under underpainting if you want. Um, as, as some of you might know, I, I started my career as a woodcut artist, and I find that scraping of the paints really very satisfying to me. It sort of taps into the way I think about a woodcut, about how when you when you cut in the block, you're you're revealing, you know, either the color underneath or the, or the color of the paper. And I'm just um, softening a few edges here. It's not really necessary, but there's a possibility that some of these edges might might be revealed in the next application of paint, especially if I do this graffito thing and I I uh, scrape, you know, maybe around the edges of, of forms. So those edges may, may be revealed. Plus, you know, you do want to have an underpainting that's inspirational, that inspires you to you know, take your painting up a notch on the next level, the next phase. So you don't you don't want an underpainting that doesn't really inspire you. So so that is one you know justification of, of adding in some detail that you know might be totally just lost in the final application of paint. But uh, you know you can just tell I'm you know I'm just having fun kind of noodling some of the paint here and. And uh, it can be quite interesting.